Thy Sword is a retro inspired hack and slash roguelike game with two main characters to choose from. You battle your way through various stages trying to conquer six boss fights along the way. Developed by Game Phase and published by Red Lake Games, is this game what it inspires to be, or should it die by the sword? Let's find out. You, bold adventurer, must break the tyranny of the Dark Overlord. Your quest will be to obtain the ancient crystals of power with which to overcome the Dark Overlord's rule. Can you be that hero? Can you fulfill the destiny of greatness and bring deliverance to these shadowed lands? The answer lies in your heart and thy sword. Oh, don't know what happened there. Depending on which of the two characters you choose from, they'll each come with their own perks over the other. If you choose the Barbarian, you'll start off with the powerful Broadsword. And if you choose the Valkyrie, you'll start with the Short Sword, but you'll also have the Longbow. No matter which you choose, you can upgrade either later in the game. There are a couple of graphics effects you can use, like the Pixel Grid here, or the CRT option here. Both work well, but I prefer using none, so that's what I'll use for this gameplay. The levels here are all procedurally generated, meaning no two playthroughs will be the same. Evident here when I die and start over, you'll notice that while the style is the same, the layout of the level completely changed. On the whole it does a great job of accomplishing this, but with some of the levels it can feel a little bit lagging in difficulty because of it as well. And frustrating in some cases, where the enemy needs to be killed with a large sword attack on a small platform like this. But it keeps the game fresh when you inevitably die over, and over, and over, and over again. Thankfully, some of the enemies can be taken out from the platform below, making it easier to survive when you're low on health and waiting for a health drop. The larger attack is harder to pull off because you need to land it on the enemy for it to work. But it will result in you chopping off their head. Yeah, gruesome stuff. <laughs> The bow comes in very handy for the same reasons, because you can take out enemies from a distance and you can use your shield to protect you from the majority of attacks, but it'll not stop some attacks like these boulders here. A quick tip though, if you can get the enemies to hit the glowing barrels, it'll take them out for you. The aim of each level is to kill all the enemies on the screen and the exit will open. Be careful with some of these boxes though, because some of them contain extra enemies, which you'll need to take out if the door hasn't already opened. When you see this crow, try and take it out quickly, because the key will open the chest, which is one of the quickest ways to earn money for levelling up. After each area, you'll return to the village where you can spend any of the coins you've collected. You can gamble away on a game of 21, which doesn't often work in my favour, or you can talk to the merchant and the cleric and buy some upgrades. There isn't one set path to follow, so you create your own adventure as you go. As you progress, you'll encounter tougher enemies as well as new obstacles like these floor spikes. You can walk across them but land on them, and that's a different story. So keep your eyes peeled for any changes in the stages. Hmm, these enemies remind me of something, and I can't quite put my finger on it. Attack wise, you'll have a few options starting off depending on who you choose. You'll either have a strong sword, or a weaker sword with a bow and arrow. Like I mentioned, you can buy upgrades from the merchant and the cleric, so be sure to check them both. They vary with each visit, so upgrade when you can. And some of the options for upgrading are extra life, bow, different swords, magic attacks, health, resistance to poison, extra light for night levels, all bringing with them great perks to help you along the way. Anything you purchase will show up in your inventory here when you pause the game. As you can see, I purchased the light source for the night levels, and well, the video speaks for itself. A very welcome upgrade. The boss fights are the only levels in the game that are not procedurally generated, which is great because you get to play them as the developers intended. The boss's patterns can change though depending on where you are on the screen, 
and how you attack, making them feel unique and meaning you'll have to be more strategic with your moves. The spider was without a doubt the easiest of all the bosses. It did take me out once though, but once I learned his pattern, there was no problem the second time around. For this sea monster though, let's just say I'm glad I had plenty of coins on me to retry. The layout of the controls are the only issue I have with this game. To me they have a strange layout, for example the powerful sword attack is mapped to the Y button and the normal sword attack is mapped to the front right trigger. Thankfully though there is an option to map the buttons to a placement that suits you better. Once I did this I had no issues with the gameplay. I know it's a small issue but thought it was worth noting and thankfully the developers added the option to map them yourself. With three difficulty levels to choose from and the ability to play a couch co-op there's plenty to keep you coming back for more. It has a couple of shortcomings like I mentioned, but Thy Sword is an absolute blast to play. It's a great example of the quarter eating arcade games from the 80s and 90s, and it keeps you coming back for more. With its randomly generated levels, no two playthroughs are the same. The hardest difficulty is very unforgiving, you've got one life and game over. Thankfully in the village you can purchase extra life and health to help get you through. I wasn't able to beat it on this difficulty though. Shame. But that didn't stop me trying. Guess I'm just a glutton for punishment. I'd like to thank Rattalake again for the code for review. But with all reviews I look at it as if I had bought the game myself. And if I would be happy with my purchase. And in this case, that's a definite yes. There's plenty of replayability which for me is one of the most important aspects of any game. I give this game a very solid 8 out of 10. This type of game isn't for everyone and I'm sure some people will get bored of the same thing over and over again, but for me it never felt like a chore to play. There was enough variation and some strategy involved that kept me entertained throughout. If you're a fan of this genre of games then it's well worth taking a look. And if you'd like to check this one out for yourself, the links are in the description below. You should get a few hours of gameplay from a playthrough depending on your skill level, but realistically you'll be coming back for more and if you're anything like me, it'll be booted up regularly. Is this one you'd consider picking up for yourself, or are there better examples that take your fancy more? Let me know in the comment section below, and as always, happy gaming. Now, time for me to try it on the hardest difficulty again. <sighs> Wish me luck.